Hello everyone, this is Cloud here, and I welcome you today to my guide on the Black Demon Slayer assignment. In this guide we'll be talking about the following things, the requirements in order to fight them, who assigns them as a task and how many, best location to do the task, best strategy using their weaknesses, recommended equipment from highest to lowest, tips and tricks, and of course the key drops for them. Now, you can choose to watch a certain section of this guide if you wish, just by clicking annotation um, on either part. If not, just click the play all option. Make sure you have annotations turned on. So, to start this guide off, we're going to talk about the requirements in order to kill the black demons effectively. So, like a lot of other monsters, black demons don't actually require a slayer level in order to kill them, um, but a high combat level is a must. Their um, combat level is of 140, they have 3,500 life points, they have a magic based attack, and their max hit is 304. No slayer specific item is required to kill them, like a lot of other monsters, and overall I recommend having about 130 plus combat and a high prayer level in order to kind of fight these effectively, um, minimising the amount of trips to complete your task. So that's it for the requirements section, now on to the different slayer masters who can assign them to you as a task. So, the lower level um, Slayer Master who can assign them as a task is Simona. Um, she can be found in the Polnaviak area, look out for her Slayer Master symbol. Um, the requirements in order to use Simona are 130 combat, 35 Slayer and you must have completed the Smoking Kills quest. Now, I recommend you have about 140 combat before frequently asking Simona for tasks. Basically, because the requirement is 130, people go straight to her. The higher combat you are, the quicker your task can then be completed, and that's what you really want to go for, speed rather than um, you know experience, because overall, it will overtake it. However, if you choose to do it around 130 combat, it's completely your own choice. A Simona assigns between 120 to 185 Black Demons. The next highest Slayer Master, or Masters I should say, to assign Black Demons as a task are Juradel and Lapalock. Um, Juradel is replaced by him after the Wild Gothic Sleeps quest, but they both have the same function. So, the requirements in order to use them are 150 combat and 50 Slayer, and you must complete the Shiloh Village quest, as you will find the Slayer Masters in Shiloh Village. Again, look out for their Slayer symbol. Um, again, I recommend being at least 10 combat levels higher, which is 160 combat, just to increase the speed of your Slayer assignment tasks you receive from them. Both Juradel and Lapalock assign between 130 to 200 Black Demons. So, the final Slayer Master and the highest level 1 to assign it as a task is Curadel. Now, the requirements to use her are 160 combat, 75 Slayer, and you must complete the Barbarian training in order to reach her. Now, I recommend having 170 combat for Curadel, mainly because as she's the highest um, Slayer Master, she will assign you a very huge amount of um, Slayer monsters to kill, so your higher combat level, the quicker you're going to get through those tasks. But again, that's completely your choice. And Curadel assigns between 190 to up to 200. 150 black demons. That's it for the who assigns them as a task section. Next, we're on to their best location to do the task. Okay, so there are four primary locations in order to fight black demons. Um, however, there's only a couple I really highly recommend. So what we'll do, we're going to go through all of them, and I'm going to go from the one I recommend least to the one I recommend the most. So the first um, place to go to to fight black demons, and the reason I um, recommend this one the least, well you'll find out in a sec, it's underneath Edgeville. Now when you go through the Edgeville dungeon section, um, there's an area where you walk in and you're actually technically in the wilderness. Um, the black demons are around the level 5 wilderness section. Now I don't really recommend this area much. Um, the only positive of it I guess is it's not going to be crowded because not many people are going to be there. But the negative for that is, is because um, there's the high possibility of PKers being around that area and you've only got to get the one who's the same level as you and well set up and they could be able to make some easy money from you, especially now the wilderness will um, drop all of your stuff, there is no keeping any items anymore. So I recommend that one the least. Um, I can't remember how many are around there, I think there's about four or five black demons, but there's plenty of other locations that you can use um, that should help you better. The next location, which again I don't really recommend, but depending on your requirements, is up to you whether you want to go to it or not, is actually in the Brimhaven Dungeon. So Brimhaven Dungeon's got quite a wide variety of monsters and that in it, and you can access it by paying 875 coins to uh, Sammy Botch, I don't remember what his name is, <laughs> um, to go and access to it. Now the Black Demons are quite far in, you have to jump over a few obstacles, get past some few enemies in order to reach them. 
Now, the reason I really recommend this place is it's fairly safe because um, obviously there's no risk of uh, PvP like the other one. Um, it's quite easy to gain access to him from this dungeon. The negative is only three black demons in the area, and um, if depending on your combat level, you can get hit by the uh, wild dogs because they can be they can be very aggressive until you get to a certain level. Not sure what that one is, but it'd be very annoying if you're trying to get a slayer task done of like 190 black demons, and you've only got three to go from, and every time you're getting distracted by a uh, wild dog. So that's why I don't really recommend the Brimhaven dungeon. However, if you can't do these next two to the best potential, then this might be your best choice in doing so. So, the next location where they've got quite a few black demons is the deeper half of Taverly Dungeon. Now, this one I recommend quite highly, depending if you have um, the requirements in order to use this dungeon to your um, best ability. So, you get to this dungeon by um, going from Falador, climbing over the wall and down the ladder. Now, as soon as you enter the Tavoli dungeon, there are two agility shortcuts that you can use. One is a level 70 agility shortcut, which will take you for a pipe um, and go around just past some blue dragons and will also lead you up to the black demons and there's also another bit which is 80 agility which you jump through and again it's only a short walk to the black demons now if you have the agility level in order to use the pipe which is level 70 this dungeon will be pretty much ideal for you because it's very easy to reach the black demons straight away there's a huge number of them in here I think there's at least about 20 um, there, there, again there's not really many players who will do black demons in this place because of um, some of the other locations and that and they're not really a popular task however even if there's like two or three other people there's still plenty of black demons to go around um, for you to get your task done quite quickly now unfortunately if you don't have 70 agility to use that pipe you've got to do the very long winded route of going all the way around the dungeon using the um, dusty key that you can acquire from the prisoner in the black um, knight stronghold area to have to go through the doors past the blue dragons into the black demons so if you have to do that it's a very like sort of five six minute process to reach the demons and it's because of that which is sort of the only negative of this area so if you don't have that then this next location that I'm going to speak about might be the best one for you so the final main location for the Black Demons, and it's the one I recommend the most, bear in mind you again you have this other requirement to go with it, is in the Chaos Tunnels. Now, first off, I know it's a bit risky having to get to these Chaos Tunnels, but at the same time it's not. Um, the entrance that you need to go to, basically if you just jump over the edge of your wall and pretty much head north directly from it, you will see a sign where there's a crack in the ground and you enter it and you'll be straight in the Chaos Tunnel. So it only takes about a minute to get over there, so the chance of you getting um, someone attack you during that time is very low and you'll probably be able to either get to the um, Chaos Tunnel in time or make your way back without losing your stuff. So it's not too much risk. Once you're in the Chaos Tunnels, um, there's no like PvP area in here, so even if other players are in here, they can't kill you whilst you're inside the Chaos Tunnels, so that's the bonus. Now, it's a bit of a long route getting to them, but I think you have to pass five or six sections, so just like look where I'm going and you'll see um, whereabouts you end up. But you get into this area where there's a few black demons, um, four or five I believe there are. Um, however, the bonus is, and this is where the other requirement comes in place, is if you have 70 Dungeoneering, you'll see there's a Dungeoneering Resource Dungeon door just over here, and if you go in here, this area is absolutely chock-a-block with Black Demons. Now, I think best that this is the best location for everyone, bearing in mind they have the 70 Dungeoneering, um, because it doesn't really get very crowded, um, and also because they're all kind of close to you, it's quite easy to do like multiple um, target attacks, they'll like, dispatch them quicker. Um, again, seeing that it's the Chaos Tunnel entrance here is very close to Edgeville, it only takes a couple of minutes to go back to the bank and come back here again, whereas say you didn't have so many agility for the Tavoli Dungeon, you'd have about a 10 minute process of going back to the bank and all the way back to the deep. So this one is the one I recommend the most, and obviously the one we spoke about at the beginning in Edgeville is the one I recommend the least. But again, listen to all of those, go by what um, sort of requirements and skills you have, and make the decision on where to go from there. But that's all for the best location to do your task, now on to best strategy to complete your task. So, like all different monsters, black demons have a specific weakness, and their weakness is bolt attacks. So any type of crossbow uses some form of bolt, depending on your level. Um, again, you want to ensure that the bolts you have can be used by the crossbow you have, um, because since the evolution of combat, certain bolts can't be used for certain crossbows. So if you plan to use enchanted ones, make sure you've got the best crossbow in order to do so. Um, 
Black Demons are also weak to the effects of Silver Light or Dark Light. Um, both these swords do extra damage against demons and can be useful for lower um, players. However, due to the sort of setup in order to sort of like maximize your hits for the Dark Light, again, I don't really um, recommend using a melee approach as these demons are a magic based attack. Your melee armor will be a negative against them, so I really do recommend using a ranged setup and obviously using crossbow and bolt type attacks in order to defeat them. Now here's just a little tip of mine, um, just to increase the time of your stay at the demons, use healing methods such as healing familiars or a beast of burden to carry supplies, um, or even the soul split prayer can come very handy in order to maximise your kills per trip. Anyways, that's all for best strategy to complete the task, now on to recommended equipment from highest to lowest. So, as I spoke about in a previous section, Black Demons have a very high weakness against Bolt type attacks, so obviously the setup we're going to go through on here will be for the optimal range setup. Now, it's completely your own choice if you want to use a melee type setup or a magic based setup, I won't speak about that in this guide, because um, the reason I made him like this is these guys are to help you in decrease the amount of time you spend on each task, so you get them done as quickly and effectively as you can, and you know, the most cost effective, and obviously go by using range, that will be your best approach in order to defeat the black teams effectively. So this is the recommended equipment you want from highest to lowest um, for all the different sections. So for helmet you either want a full slayer helmet, pernix cow, armadillo helmet, archer helmet or helmet of nice knot. Cape you want a completionist cape, talker cow, Ava's alerter, soul wars cape or fire cape or any lower equivalent if you don't have them. Um, for your amulet, you want either a Saradoma's Murmur, Amulet of Ranging, Amulet of Fury, or an Amulet of Glory, or again, any lower if you haven't got um, the funds for that. Uh, weapon, you either want to use a Royal Crossbow, a Chaotic Crossbow, an Armadil Crossbow, or a Rune Crossbow. Um, for the shield section, you either want to use an Eagle Eye Cut Shield, an Elysian Spirit Shield, Armadil Buckler, Black Dragon Hind Shield, or an Offhand Crossbow if you plan to do Dual Wheel to speed up the task and sacrifice some defense. Um, for your body, you want either Pernix body, Armadillo chest plate, Royal Dragonhide body, Kirill's top or Black Dragonhide body, or again any lower if you don't have the requirements for those. For the leg section you either want Pernix chaps, Armadillo chain skirt, Royal Dragonhide chaps, Kirill's skirt or Black Dragonhide chaps, or again any lower than that. For gloves, Swift gloves, Pernix gloves, Armadillo gloves or Barrow's gloves, um, I don't really think there's a lower alternative for them. For boots, you want either Glaven boots, Pernic boots, Armadillo boots, or Ranger boots, or um, I think the next last one will be Snakeskin boots, but they're dirt cheap. <laughs> um, for your ring, you either want the Archer's ring imbued, or standard Archer's ring, or if you want to increase like, your wealth, then bring a ring of wealth with you. So as for your armour and weapon, out of that list you want to try and set up it the best as possible. For your inventory, you definitely want to try and have this stuff. So you want a form of emergency teleport, just about to get out of there quickly if you need to. Um, ranging and defence potions can come in handy, so that's either the standard ones or super defence potion or even the extremes if you have the high enough herb lore level to make them. Um, for your bolts, you either want to use broad tipped bolts or runite bolts, or again any lower if your range level is quite low, so the next last would be adamant eye bolts. Um, you want either a few prayer potions or prayer flasks, um, especially if you're very high prayer level and, you use, and want to use soul split a lot, you'll um, really want to make sure you've got plenty of prayer um, potions to basically maintain that. Um, for your food, you um, want sharks or higher, um, this really depends on your cooking level because obviously they've updated food now where if you eat a food that you can actually cook it will increase the amount of life points it would normally, so um, you want to try and make sure what you're eating you have the same cooking level for. Um, runes for high alchemy spells, that comes in handy just to sort of maximise your um, drops you get from them. Um, and also combat related auras will be a help, so either like sort of a prayer orientated aura, um, like greater reverence to increase the amount of time, um, de decrease the amount of time your prayer depletes and the amount of um, points potions restore, or even like a ranging boosting aura, anything like that. And as for summons, you either want to bring like a healing summon, a beast of burden summon, or a range type familiar which will help increase your kills per trip. But that's it for the recommended equipment from highest to lowest, so hopefully that helps you out there. And next section we're on to is tips and tricks. So, my tips and tricks for my new Slayer guys are slightly different to the old ones, because before I used to be able to talk about things like prayer flashing and sort of like other um, 
tips and tricks like that. However, now with the evolution of combat, there's plenty of new like, sort of abilities that are available to you and the sort of different approaches you can do while fighting the Black Demon. So here you've got the choice of either using like a one-handed crossbow um, or a crossbow of a shield or even a dual wielding crossbows. So we're going to talk about the different approaches on that. So the most um, quick way of killing these um, black demons will be obviously to dual wield the crossbows so at the moment obviously I've got rune crossbow and offhand rune crossbow there's a lot higher level ones you can go for if you choose to so um, obviously that's your own decision there um, by doing this you're obviously sacrificing a fair bit of defense for a higher sort of range output and speed of killing the demons and also certain other abilities will be more effective while dual, uh, dual wielding so all these different abilities you can use um, will all depend on your momentum. Um, one I would try and do quite a lot is the piercing shot which will shoot your target and does a shot dealing 125% weapon damage and that um, basically the cooldown um, recovers quite quickly on that so you can do that quite often. Um, and again when you get higher level and obviously your momentum's higher you can either do a snapshot which is like two arrows or rapid fire that's a very effective one you see me doing that quite a fair bit. Um, another ability is Snipe. Um, you take aim at your target and deal up to 219% weapon damage after 3 seconds. So obviously you're sacrificing a bit of time there, but you normally kind of guarantee getting a um, shot in on them. And I tend to do that, especially when they get near low health and I've been missing like a couple of times. So that kind of comes in handy to do that. Um, binding Shot, I wouldn't really recommend because it um, apparently stuns your target, but they are ranged... Um, sorry not range, magic based monsters anyway so they're not going to stop attacking you so it's a bit useless using that. Fragmentation shot is pretty good so that's like a sort of continuous attack so um, that's a simple explosion. Um, I would do that one as often as you can really. Now one ability I try and stay away from unless you're high sort of level is the ricochet ability which will hit two additional targets nearby. Um, basically it's handy if you can dispatch them quite quickly but you don't want too many demons attacking you in one go otherwise your life points will start to deplete so keep an eye out for that and similar to the bombardment um, ability again it's very effective like damage wise but it can hit all other targets as well so um, you want to be careful of that and the best ability and now this is why you want to kind of use um, those other abilities like piercing shot quite often um, is the unload ability and um, once you're hundred percent momentum so obviously it will take a little bit of time to build that up but you do a continuous attack for about six seconds um, on your target and it will deal a a very high amount of damage and it normally like guarantees always hits. I know a couple of odd times in this footage I didn't but it's your best way to sort of guarantee killing a demon quite quickly so and again if you've got a like soul split um, a handy thing to do is when you've guaranteed to got a big attack like that like unload or one of the other attacks which are dead shot I think that's the other 100% uh, momentum ability um, if you use soul split in conjunction with that you'll heal yourself quite a fair bit from delivering all that damage to him so it's definitely worth uh, looking out for that. So on one hand you can dual wield, the other hand you can um, use a shield and a one handed crossbow um, at the same time so you can go for more a defensive sort of setup and obviously by doing this you'll be able to use a lot of the defensive abilities um, so a wide variety of these are actually quite handy the one the most um, useful is the resonate, oh, I can't remember how you believe pronounce it now um, basically it's the attack that will heal you instead of harm you um, receive in about six seconds of when you cast it and um, there's also another a um, ability that does help alongside that um, you need a defense level 67 to use but it's called preparation and it will basically um, reduce the cooldown time of that other ability so basically you can use re resonance um, quite a fair bit then um, so you can kind of sort of consistently heal yourself and also the really handy ability um, once you get 100% momentum is rejuvenate and you will heal 40% of your life points um, and fully restore your drain stats as well. Um, it takes about 10 seconds to do, so it's quite handy to finish like off a demon once you've got 100% momentum and then do it straight away, so you pretty much um, heal yourself back to full then. Um, another ability that you can use for 100% is immortality, so if you die um, during the 
30 seconds of you casting it, you'll be returned to life. Um, the immortality effect is consumed, and I can't remember how long it takes to um, recover the cooldown from that, but um, it's very handy if you get in a very tight situation, especially if you're not too sure about fighting these black demons sort of like your first time. And vice versa, again, there's another ability called Barricade, which will uh, make an impenetrable barricade, which prevents all damage for 10 seconds. So, quite some handy defensive abilities there, and you're also able to use your ranged abilities alongside with that. Of the um, dual wielding abilities will become um, inactive while you've got the shield equipped. So, obviously, um, like I said, um, using this defensive setup, you'll obviously be going for a lot slower kills, but they'll be more safer, so you don't have to worry so much about the risk of going through loads of life points. So, and this is also handy if you don't have like soul split or a really good like healing familiar. Now, my main tip will be kind of combining these two elements together, so the dual wielding element and the defensive um, abilities element. So um, I noticed obviously it was taking quite a lot of time to kill them using your defensive setup and again you was use, losing a lot of life points by dual wielding. So I thought you know you can actually combine these two together. So if you make sure you bring an offhand crossbow and a shield, so I bought like a dragon fire shield like ranged one just you know uh, to make up for a normal shield. Basically what you can do is what I was doing which was using your dual wield abilities um, and you know dispatching the demons as quick as you can obviously I have soul split so it does help out a little bit and um, sort of maximize the life points you can heal from that um, obviously I had a bit of assistance from guys Titan as well so that was helping to um, get some damage done on the demons but once I got to quite a low sort of amount of life points within my last sort of 20% of life points I then put my shield on and carried on fighting them defensively but at the same time then I was slowly healing my life points back up as well without having to use so much food or prayer etc so again the rejuvenate ability comes really in handy so the main tip I would say here is obviously keep using your um, dual wielding attacks until you get quite low life points and as soon as your adrenaline is filled up use that um, wherever the attack is called again rejuvenate ability to heal yourself pretty much back to full and then once you're nearly full health again then you can go back to dual wielding so that way you're kind of maximizing the sort of time you can spend at those black demons per trip without the need of having to um, rely so much on prayer and food so hopefully those few tips and tricks in there will help you out but anyway that's it for this section and now we're on to the final one which is the key drops to collect Okay, so you will earn 120.2 Slayer XP per demon, so a task of 100 therefore will get you around 12,020 Slayer XP, and again obviously you'll get even more for higher amounts of science such as 150, 200 etc, so not bad XP if you sort of um, get the knack of killing them quite quickly. Now their drops are sort of um, variant, so there's a few things to look out for, so firstly um, collect any charm, um, well, these are what I recommend anyway, so it's completely up to you, but um, I will collect any charms, they're fairly good um, drops of crimson charms so that's a quite a bit of a positive there for the weapons and armor I would look out for rune battle axes rune 2 h swords rune chain bodies rune helmets rune square shields and rune full helmet all those items there can be high out which is handy um, save some military space um, for runes and ammo section you want to look out for air blood fire chaos and law runes for herbs they um, pretty much drop like the whole variety so you can drop grimy ranar irrit apento quam cadentine dwarf weed and lantodine you also want to look out for any coins they drop, so um, obviously I know it can be a bit annoying having to go around collecting, but it will make all the difference. Um, they drop quite a lot of coal noted, so that's pretty good, element bars and ancient effigies. Now, Black Demons also have a 100% drop rate for Infernal Ashes, and if you can actually get the time to go around and collect some more, it can make some good prayer experience just by you know discarding all of those ashes. So. Um, might be worth collecting them if you can. And also, Black Demons drop many things from the rare drop table. 90% of the rare drop table is good money, and with a ring of wealth, the chance of receiving something from it is increased. And at the moment, the highest reward from there is about 20 mil if you're lucky, so you never know, it might be worth bringing that ring of wealth. Um, just another little tip, I did mention it earlier on, is obviously bringing runes for high alchemy drops can make your task very profitable, and pretty much all of the weapon and armor drops are good value to high alchemy. In some cases, they're worth more than on the grand exchange, so that's pretty good there. But uh, yeah, that's it for the key drops and rewards from them.
Well, that's pretty much it for my guide on these monsters, so I think I've covered everything. I've tried my best to anyway, so um, obviously these tasks can be a little bit time consuming, black demons, but the experience is pretty good, and you can get some good money from the drops as well, especially if you're lucky enough to get something from the rare drop table. Um, but hopefully what I have um, given you here will increase the speed of the task and make uh, making the killing of these monsters much more easier for you. Um, well, thanks for watching everyone. I have worked hard on this guy, so please make sure you like, comment, favourite, subscribe, and also share with your friends. Thanks everyone and happy slaying.